Okay, Hervé, uh, could you please tell us about the focus of this mission in, no in the Northern Cape? Well, the focus of this mission in the Northern Cape is actually part of the 70th anniversary uh, of UNICEF. And the team and, uh, and myself felt like uh, it was necessary for UNICEF to be in a part of the country where, you know, children are very hard to reach. And uh, because of the distance and because of the logistic that uh, uh, it implies. So uh, therefore, it, uh, being for us being here today on the edge of the Kalahari Desert is to show that UNICEF can be present anywhere across the country. And so, uh, Hervé, tell us, what were the main findings uh, from this mission? Uh, now you've been a whole day on the field and uh, uh, you've met uh, um, health workers, you've met mothers and children. What are the key findings that you'd like to share with us? There are basically three key, key findings. The number one finding is the fact that uh, when you're dealing with a situation where children are so, very, so difficult to reach, proximity and, 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 and uh, Agility in delivering services to children is critical. So, uh, finding a way to get closer to children uh, is, is the first is the first lesson. Whether we use logistics, whether we use technology, like innovations, mobile platform, must be explored in a province such as the Northern Cape. The second uh, conclusion takeaway is the fact that uh, family matters, and and in fact uh, uh, the whole issue of parenting. You know, and making sure that uh, children uh, do receive proper care and information from caregivers is is uh, is uh, is one of the takeaways. The third takeaway that I am uh, sort of uh, 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 going away with is the fact that we do have a serious concern regarding uh, under five mortality, whether it's nutrition, whether it's HIV/AIDS, whether it's access to to potable water. So, uh, and these are issues that we can address with the government, but also improving. In Involving some of the corporates, you know, into, into uh, responding to these needs of children. So, on purpose. Uh, so, what are the solutions, and how can we, as UNICEF, uh, tackle these bottlenecks? Well, the solutions I see uh, solutions where we use our global knowledge on, on, on for instance, drawing on, on what we have learned in reaching children in emergency, for instance, when we have difficult settings. You know, how do we do this, and how can we translate this experience and knowledge? into a region that is not uh, undergoing an emergency, but uh, that is confronted with the kind of situations we find in emergency settings where we have difficulty, geographic uh, difficulty in accessing children. So uh, um, uh, that's one, one takeaway. The second takeaway, the second solution probably is, is, is building a partnership you know, with, with the government with corporates and uh, and with with UNICEF on on sort of really forging solutions that are really suitable to this kind of context. So uh, on on the issue of uh, private sector partnership, South Africa is a leader on uh, uh, the African continent when it comes to uh, to this area. Uh, where do you think uh, a private sector uh, has a niche in as a, as as a provider of solutions for children, specifically in in uh, in a location such as uh, Northern Cape and the Kalahari? What what is coming up very clearly from this uh, from this field visit is that. First of all, we really need to understand the economic dynamic of this province. We need to understand who is active economically, who is an employer in this in this region. You know, what is the what is the interest of these employers to work and improve the, the well-being and the, of their workforce? And uh, once we have that information, we can use the, the brand of UNICEF. We can use our, our reputations. We, we can use our corporate engagement program in South Africa. To actually bring companies, not only the local companies that are active here, but use some of our partners at the global level to influence the views and the position of the of the CEOs and managers of the local companies, and make them invest in children, in collaboration with government uh, entities that are present uh, in the in the northern Cape. Um, so. Now I'd like to, to get into, uh, we've talked about the UNICEF at 70 uh, anniversary. Um, we also know that uh, UNICEF is in South Africa is, is at a crossroads. It's uh, ending its current country program in 2017. Uh, it's now developing its vision for the next country program, 2018-2021. Uh, could you give us key highlights of uh, this new vision for UNICEF? 
in, in South Africa over the next uh, country program cycle? Well, the vision of UNICEF in South Africa for the next country, uh, uh, for the next country program is actually almost already set in the sense that we have, def we have determined three core priorities, ending violence against children, you know, uh, results for adolescents and early childhood development in its, you know, in its global sense. So uh, in terms of the, 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 road, the roadmap, we more or less have uh, what are the core priorities that we believe is important for, for, for South Africa and for the children of South Africa. We also have a very unique opportunity because our new country program will actually start at the same time with the, with the new strategic framework. And, uh, and our core priorities are actually aligned with, 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 the, with, the, with the global priorities. We cannot, you know, project, we cannot uh, influence the future without taking into consideration some very key drivers of child deprivations in South Africa. One of them is HIV AIDS. So, the, you know, the future will be about you know, eliminating mother-to-child transmissions, you know, making sure that all South Africans and particularly young people and children and mothers, pregnant mothers, are getting the services that they need. Number two is poverty. There are hundreds of thousands of children trapped in poverty, you know, because, because they live in poor households. So the, the, the issue of poverty alleviation, UNICEF is going to have to contribute to, you know, reducing, uh, uh, you know, addressing the issue of poverty from the child agenda perspective. There is also a, a clear uh, um, uh, determinant, a, a clear uh, factor that is, uh, that is fueling deprivation, and that's the gender issue. So gender balance, reaching girls, for instance, keeping girls in school is going, to be, is going to be critical. And I would say there is the whole history, whole legacy of apartheid that's been you know, characterized by, by violence, by extreme inequality, by uh, 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 social disparities. So by uh, the, the next country program will probably look into how do we make sure that the 85,000 children, uh, the ch uh, child-headed households, actually have an opportunities in the future? How do we make sure that the 500,000 uh, 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 children that are on foster care, you know, how do we help the government make sure that the quality of the expenditures made for children are actually, of, is actually good? I mean, we will be confronted with an environment where resources will become more and more stringent. So the, the, the role of UNICEF in such a context is to be innovative, to be creative, to be cost-conscious, and to be effective in terms of make, reaching all children, including those who are very hard to reach. And that's the purpose of being present here today.